Hello, I'm Emma Walton Hamilton, children's book author, editor, and coach, and I'm here today to talk to you about writing successful query letters for picture books. Writing a picture book can be deceptively difficult. You have just a thousand words or less within which to tell your story and 32 pages, but writing a successful query letter for picture books can be even more challenging. You have just four short paragraphs within which to say, pick me, pick me. So how do you craft that pitch-perfect query letter? Let's take a look. Let's start with an overview of what the query is and does. Some agents and publishers require an initial query letter. In other words, you have to ask if they want to see your manuscript before you submit it to them. The query letter contains basic information about you and your manuscript, but it is usually sent without the manuscript although sometimes sample pages are requested and sometimes with picture books the manuscript is requested along with the query. Query letters should be no more than four short paragraphs, a couple of sentences each. The important thing is to be sure to check the submission policy on the agent's or publisher's website first before you query or submit anything. Every agency and publishing house has its own style and requirements and sometimes they're very specific. The recommendations I'll be making here are general guidelines, but this is definitely not a one-size-fits-all item. Now before we get into the nuts and bolts of the query itself, here are a few important tips to keep in mind. Research the particular agent or editor first. Google them, read interviews they may have given, whatever you can do to get yourself as familiar with who they are who they represent, what their taste is like, and specifically what they're looking for in order to connect with them personally through your query. Be very brief and respectful of the agent's or editor's time and expertise. Don't try to be hip, funny, or bossy. Just keep it short, professional, and to the point. Now having said that, you do want to craft your sentences artfully so that the query conveys both the strength of your writing skills and the spirit of your manuscript. Finally, Proofread your query meticulously before you send it. Check for spelling, grammar, unified font, correct name, then proofread it again. I can't tell you how many times I have seen or heard about queries that were dismissed because the editor's name was misspelled or there was a careless typo. This is your best shot at showing them that you are a gifted writer and attentive to detail. Don't mess it up by being in too much of a hurry. Now onto the structure of the query itself. As I mentioned before, the query should be four paragraphs total. Let's take a look at the first one. Your first paragraph should provide a quick overview of the entire query. It should include information on how you came to that agent or publisher, in other words, if someone referred you, who was it? Or perhaps you know they are the publisher of so-and-so, or they are interested in a particular type of book of which yours fits. Plus, it should include the name, length, and genre of your book and the target audience. So, here's an example. I am contacting you at the recommendation of, and here you insert the name of the person who referred you, or I am contacting you because I know you publish books by my favorite author so-and-so, or because I know you are interested in picture books about dogs, let's say. I have written a 900-word picture book, and here you plug in your title, and the book is intended for, and here, you enter your target audience. So you might say boys, you might say girls, you might say four to six year olds, middle grade readers, young adults, whomever you feel your best target audience or your most comprehensive target audience for this particular project might be. If this is intended to be a series, you should definitely indicate as much. You can say, my goal is that this should be a series. Other titles that I'm currently developing include, and then you list your titles, or you can say other titles that I'm currently developing are attached or can be provided on request. Let's move on to the second paragraph. The second paragraph is where you describe your book more specifically. This is your elevator pitch. It's what the book is about in a nutshell. Your second paragraph should be made up of two or three compelling sentences that describe and capture the spirit of your book. And it should conclude with a sentence about what the theme is, 
or in other words, what the hero or protagonist learns at the end of the story. So let's look at an example using Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. After making mischief of one kind or another, Max is sent to bed without supper. His imagination takes over, and he sails to the land of the wild things, conquers the fearsome beasts, and leads them all in a wild rumpus. Finally, he returns home to discover that while being wild is wonderful, it's better still to be loved. Now let's move on to the third paragraph. This is where you include any market research or information that helps position your book to sell well in the marketplace. If there are other books on this subject that have already been published, mention them as a way of demonstrating interest in the subject matter, but also mention how yours is unique. Let's look at some examples. In the spirit of the classic, let's say, Make Way for Ducklings, uh, my book, Hampton's Duckling, is unique or offers a fresh twist in that it discusses so-and-so or it is approached from such and such an angle. You might say, while this is a picture book, it holds crossover appeal for older audiences and will appeal to the gift market or to graduates or to new parents or to cat lovers of all ages. Think creatively here. Who else might your book appeal to besides its target audience? You might say, this is a particularly timely topic in that, and perhaps reference something that has happened recently in the news. This is a particularly timely topic in that the uh, Obamas recently held a conference on bullying at the White House. You might say, because of its subject matter, potential additional sales outlets for the books include garden centers, pet stores, health clubs, etc., any and all specialty stores or other outlets that you can think of that might be appropriate for selling your particular book. Now we come to the conclusion. This is just two simple sentences. If this project is of interest, I would be pleased to submit it to you. Or, if you've already attached the manuscript, I hope you will find this manuscript to be of interest. Thank you for your consideration. Now, some offices will ask for a few sample pages of the manuscript along with your query. Others may ask for a synopsis or for the entire picture book. Again, be sure to check the website for the latest submission information. Know which pages of your manuscript you will send as a sample if you're requested to, and make sure those pages or the entire manuscript are submission ready before you query. You don't want to receive a yes and then have to scramble to pull your materials together. Be ready to jump on that yes. Unless you are an accomplished illustrator as well as an author, do not submit any art with a query or with your manuscript. Publishers consider it their job to pair the right artist with an author. Finally, don't be surprised to hear very quickly in response to your query, but then not to hear anything for months once they have asked to see the manuscript. Saying yes or no to a query is much easier and quicker than considering a full manuscript. So there you have it. You now have the tools to write a successful query letter. You've worked so hard on your manuscript. It really is worth the extra time to make your query letter work for you. Here's to your success.